Do you wear a particular fragrance when you putting all that ass on these dudes? Yeah, like if they don't ask for like smelly, cause like some guys will ask for it to be smelly. Like if they ask for smelly, then I'll just wake up and I shower. Like whatever. They want your ass to to stink. Yeah, and your ass is automatically gonna stink after you took a shit, even if you like wipe and clean well. Like it's gonna stink. And they want that. Yeah, they want it to stink. I'm what they fear, black man with intelligence. Ghetto fab splashed with a dash of elegance. Well spoken, but could tell him hood. Attitude funky, but that boy be smelling good. Not just a rapper, I'm a poet. They point out all my flaws, but fail to mention my heroics. Through the ages, different phases went from playing with razors to those say goodbye to blazers. No more child's play, we grown. Less bottles of Patron, more bottles of Cologne. It's like a cheat code to make a coochie melt. She paying more attention to your fragrance than your Gucci belt. So go to Bloomies, cop a bottle or two. Get some sense for your girl, cop some bottles for you. I'm giving out lessons. Come and take a part of this class. Before you spray that fragrance on, make sure you wash your ass. Sure you wash your ass. Look, that's just something that I got to say. Step your collection up. No more Axe body spray. So in a sense, so what a hater going to tell me? I'm Kobe when it comes to the colognes. You smell me? Ladies and gentlemen, yours truly, the soul in a sense, even in his absence, I remain Kobe when it comes to the cologne collection. Recipes to Gigi, the freestyles is flagrant. Today, we talking fragrance, all right? Beautiful young lady here, Mayhem Melody. Hello, I'm Mayhem Melody, New York City dominatrix. You already know the vibes. <laughs> que lo que, dámelo. Que lo que tu dices. All right, you, um, you are half Dominican and half Puerto Rican? That is a fact. Okay, so culturally, Hispanics are, are here in New York. Can you tell us that I know the difference between Dominicans and Puerto Ricans? Okay, like, what's the difference from your side? Like, growing up in both cultures. Um, who got the best food? I can't choose because I feel like Dominican food and Puerto Rican food is both good for different reasons. You right. Know? But it's both good. Like, I like both Dominican and Puerto Rican food. Culturally, like, Puerto Ricans are a little more Americanized than right. Dominicans. Right. Like, I was in Puerto Rico and I'm telling my aunt, like, oh, she was making hamburgers. And I'm like, tia, I'm una hamburguesa. And she looked at me, my confused. And then she was like, oh, un hamburger, tu quiere? And I'm like, una hamburguesa, si. Sí. Like, you're supposed to say hamburguesa in Spanish, right. but. They're a little more like it's it's a little more Americanized over there. Right. Um, I feel like Puerto Ricans are more laid back than Dominicans. I feel like Dominicans are more on go. Like I feel like my Puerto Rican half of the family, at least, they more chill. Right. So you know, we call we call Dominicans Germans. Why? Because my so I asked my dad. I just always heard it, and I was just like, "Yo, the Germans." They'd be like, "Yo, you going uptown to fuck with the Germans?" <laughs> um, so he was like, I That's asked my word. dad one day, I said, Yo, why we call him that? He said, yeah. because when they got here, they was just so dead ass, like serious, like how you said, like on go. So he's like, yo, the Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans to me is just black people that speak Spanish. That's, they more integrated. They more, yeah, yeah, yeah they here. But yeah. he was like, yo, when the Dominicans first got here, like they was on go, like you said. So it's like, it be like though, it's something that, cause like, I used to live in Dykeman, mm -hmm. so I know a lot of Dominicans. And then, like my niggas from Harlem, they be like, "Yo, why you always uptown with them with them Germans? Like, why you uptown? <laughs> like, you know they don't fuck with us like that." I'll be like, "Nah, they cool." You know what I'm yeah. saying? They be like, "I'm Dominicans." They be like, "Yo, nigga, they'll fuck their cousin for they fuck you." And I'll be like, "Nah, it's not true." Like, is that true? But I feel like nah, cause you <laughs> that face you made is that true? Nah, cause you know why I made that face? Cause um, yes, it's true. I feel like, but for both sides because. One time when I went to Puerto Rico, especially when I went as an adult, one of my cousins tried it. And I was like, ew, motherfucker. Like, never. But, yeah, I feel like that's just some real backwards shit. Like, oh, like, like fresh off the boat type yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like, at least for both Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, what I noticed is, like, the ones that's really from over there, like, will really be okay with some weird shit. From PR too. Yeah. And, and in, yeah. And in Dominican my Republic. cousin from Puerto Rico, Hibarito, full. Like, That's crazy. He was like, Lo primo se prima. I was like, nigga. So you dubbed it. OD. Did he know what he was getting himself into? Because you, 
you kind of different with your sexual appetite, like. I don't, like, around that time, I wasn't doming or anything, but that's not the point. The point right. is, you my fucking cousin, and that's nasty. <laughs> Like, it's weird. Like, yeah, that's bugged out. It's just that simple for me. Yeah, like, yeah that's bugged out. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that much of a freak. I, right. I actually live a lie. I'm a catfish. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about all of that yeah. <laughs> as well as talk about these fragrances. But do me a favor. Mm. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friend whose house smells funny because chances are the crib stinks. They do too. Now, we're going to get into these fragrances, right? Yeah. I want you to, to smell them in the beginning. And then at the end, I want you to smell them too because the opening and and how it smells later is not the same. It's gonna smell different. Okay. Um, now usually when I have women here, I I need you to rank them. Is this scent good enough for the digits, the date, or the drawers, or the or the dominatrix? Do you want to spank a nigga because he smells so good? But we are gonna get into all of that, all right? This first scent is Mancera's Tonka Cola. All right. This is a new release. Um, this scent is, is like fun and playful for a number of reasons. All right, let's see what's it about. So it has Tonka. It's got vanilla. It's got cinnamon, cherry, Sicilian lemon, and it's got cola. Like Coca Cola, like so. You're soda. not, you're not Hispanic at all. Not Puerto Rican. Not from the islands. I'm nothing. Just, not Trini. Nothing. I'm just an exotic nigga. What's your nationality? I'm black. You just that, all right. I'm listen. Like I hate, American, nice. Yo, soy very, moreno. No, nah, I know, but you know that's how. Like, that, listen, that's how much I gotta know how to say it because you know what this smell like to me. Some poppy shit. Not even. You ever did a baño? Nah, a baño is the bathroom, ain't it? Nah, but you know, like they be having baños, like you know, every like. They, you know, you got the spiritual people and they'll put oh, flowers. Oh, like, and then the all white and, and then they be perfume. having the beads and all of that? Yeah, well, yeah, some of them. Right. But this smell like like a baño I did a few years ago. So what is so what exactly is that, though? It's like a way to cleanse. Like, um, in DR, like, the slaves over there, they had to, like, um, disguise their religion, which is Ifa, with the 21 divisions. So they used, um, like, Catholic saints as to to represent their actual gods and goddesses okay. and things like that. And then part of that practice is that they'll do different baths that are made with herbs and perfumes and oils and, you know, just flowers, and right. like just different types of things depending on what you're going through spiritually and, right. you know, whatever you have going on. And it's just and that's a what, belief system I was born into. And that's what that smells like to you? Yeah, this smells like a banyo. So that smells good? It smells good, good yeah, it smells right. good. Okay. It's a cleansing feeling. I like it. Okay, okay. Who is Margot from PB? <laughs> and why was she hating on your on She your wasn't phone? hating. Margot from PB, that was my manager. She was this Eastern European lady. I can't remember exactly from where. I used to always disrespect and say she was Russian, but she wasn't Russian, and they don't like to hear that. Right. I think she was Ukrainian. Okay. But whatever. Margot is like the whole motivation behind us to how I became this whole brand of Mayhem Melody because she challenged me. Like, when I first started in the dungeon scene, like, PB wasn't my first dungeon. I so started... PB is a dominatrix dungeon? Yes, it's Pandora's box. Okay. Yeah. It's one of the last few still standing in New York City. Um, but she used to ma she used to be one of the managers there. And when I used to work there, we had these books that the clients would look at. And that's kind of how they would choose each girl. And the books will have pictures. Some girls will write little notes. Like, it just depends how creative you want to get with it, you know? Right. I, I, I don't, I'm just like, all right, I need pictures. And I need to give it to her. And then she did, the, the the first day I start working there, they're like, oh, you could just take some pictures with your cell phone. I had an Android at the time. Nasty. Yeah, nasty, nasty work. Nasty work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nasty. So I tell one of the girls there, like, yo, take pictures of me. This girl's a skinny white girl. Like, she didn't know my angles. I didn't know my own angles at and the time. And she, she was doing Dom as well? Yeah, yeah, okay. she was working there as well. So she took some horrible ass fucking pictures Do you think she did me. that on purpose? Cause you know girls be having like little sneaky shit like that. Um, 
I don't I don't know. I don't want to accuse her of that because right. I didn't get that vibe. Right. But I did go through things like with some of the girls, like when I started off in the dungeon, like they weren't always the nicest. Right. And like, you know, you have to coming have for like, their spot. Yeah, you have to have thick skin when you walk in there. Literally. And like, you know, not everybody's your friend, but it's not as bad as the strip club. But yeah, long story short, I went, she took these cell phone pictures of me. I went to FedEx. I got them printed on regular printing paper. I stapled <laughs> them together. And I write my name on it, Melody, because it was before I added the mayhem to it. Right. Um, I I just put my name. I gave it to her. Margot comes into the locker room because in the dungeon, it's like backwards from the strip club. Like in the strip club, you get dressed and then you go out into the floor. In the right. dungeon, you're kind of waiting till the client comes. Then you get dressed and then you go and okay. you, you do whatever you do with them. So Margot comes into the room and she throws the fucking... The, the packet of paper I gave her with my pictures. She's like, what fuck is this, Melody? She's like, with ass like that, you should be making bank. You should get all the smothered clients. What the fuck is this? She's like, you want me to do business with you? You need to set up a photo shoot. And right. you need to get a real book. Right. right. And I was like, I was so sad. I'm not going to lie. I cried. Nobody saw me cry. Right. I, you know, I wasn't going to let them do that. But, right. we, you know, we had couches. I just turned the other way. I started looking at my phone and, like, a couple tears shed. I'm like, damn, this lady mean as fuck. <laughs> but it sounded like she just pushed you to be better at yeah. what it was you was doing. So then um, one of the older doms that would rent from there, she tells me, she's like, listen, I do I do um, photo packages. And I think it was, like, three looks for 200 It was right. a great deal. She's like, I'll do your makeup, everything. Just bring a couple of outfits. And we'll get something done. So that's exactly what I did. I like brought a couple of outfits. She did my makeup, and it was my first ever photo shoot, and it came out pretty good. And she said she liked those those. Oh photos. yeah, when Margot okay. saw me that day taking the pictures, she's like, "Yes, Melody, that's what I'm talking about." Like you know. <laughs> and so you started out stripping. No, I started out in the dungeon. You started out in the dungeon. Yeah. And then you, so from dominatrix, you went to stripping. I gave stripping a try, but it was not for me. Okay. The so, Dominican girls is competitive. I'm Dominican too, but the Dominican girls off the boat, them bitches is competitive. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they yeah, fight for every, yeah, 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 every I strike. got manners, and you can't have manners to be a stripper because. Yeah, you got to be like, like diabolical. Yeah, like the clients who walk in, and these girls are like on the client. Yeah. Like, the client hasn't even taken off their jacket. Like, they haven't even sat down. They don't even have a drink, nothing. And they're, like, already in this client's face. And that's just not my nature. My nature is more like, I'm going to wait till this person calms down. I don't want to be annoying. Right. Like, they're here for a good time. Like, but you can't be like that in a strip club. You yeah. won't make any money. You won't make so no bread, right. right. I, I just wasted a lot of money. I didn't make any money working there. So I did it for three nights, and I was like, this ain't for me. Y'all. Three nights? Yeah. How long have you been doing it down? I've been doing that for eight years. Eight years? Yeah. All right, so. And that was recently. Shout out to Mermaids. That's where I was dancing. Y'all was on me to be there. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, because I, I, yeah, I saw that picture. Yeah. You had on. I, Why do was, men at the strip club look so mean? Y'all look mad unapproachable when y'all there. Y'all just be. Because you and got And we the, make eye contact with y'all, y'all be like. Because it be like, it's, it's like this. The way the strip club is now, it's like the club. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's not like. Like, I might not want to go to throw bread. I might just want to chill, have a drink. So you, your your approach, how you saying, like, sometimes you got to get these chicks bread to walk away. You know what I mean? That's really we what- We need the bread at least to I, walk not, away. You know how much we pay You got to get the, you got to give them the bread to walk away, but then you got them joints that's like, y'all niggas ain't tipping? And they be like, damn, man. Like you said, can I get my jacket off? Can I get a drink? How about I get a bottle? So I could pour you a shot, and then we talk, I and then I tip shot. you. I want the singles. All right, but you gotta <laughs> this way that you gotta have that healthy medium. You gotta have like like the stripper that I like is the one that's like I like having a die. I like the little silly, the little goofy one. Yeah, that's one. how like, I am, and I feel like that just didn't work for me. But she, you... And then you know what really turned me off? You want to know what was the fucking cherry on top? It wasn't even any of that. I did a stage set, right? And then the way they design these strip clubs now is fucking ridiculous. They'll have, like, the bar, and then in the middle of the bar, they have the stage. Right. 
So a client is clearly throwing money at me. He didn't throw no money at the they bartender. Threw, they, they, taking, they taking that bread. And I respectfully got off the stage and got my money. Right. Oh, I got yelled at for this. Yeah. It was my money. What you mean? I can't pick up my own fucking money. Fuck you. Fuck everybody in this fucking club. You don't I'm remember, paying y'all to work here. You don't remember a few years ago they had the the, the bartenders versus the strippers? It was like a almost like they was on strike or some shit because they said the um the bartenders was taking all the bread. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's really like that. And then let's say, all right, the loophole is if the money that's being thrown on the bartender falls on your stage, you get to keep it. Right. But you know, like, the crumbs that fall on the stage after you're done throwing thousands on a fucking bartender? It doesn't even compare. Right. I barely broke even each then night. Then it'd be like, so y'all are dancing on stage and then a bartender is there shaking her ass too. So and it's, it's like, mad weird. It's like, where do we throw the bread? Who's the money for? That's yeah, why it's like, look. So when I go I to the, like here's it. the thing. I go to the strip club. I don't want to tip everybody. I want to see the girl that I like, and I want to tip her. That's it. I don't want to. I don't want to tip them all because everything is not my flavor. What am I? I'm just paying you for you to sit here and talk. But I feel like most people is not like that. Like most people, like. What I noticed, and this is why I say, like, the Dominican girls got the game on lock because they really will just throw money at the first girl that does go up to them and that stays there and lingers long enough until they get money. Nah, and that's I'm, what they do. They linger. They're just little lingerers. Until, I'm like, in there. I'm, I'm, because in all honesty, like, I want some pussy, all right? So let's be for real. Yeah. So, and that's the part I'm the worst at, because I'm not going to give you pussy, and you're going to know from jumping. But here's the thing. It. No, no, no. <laughs> that's how some, hold no on, money. no. Hold on, no. You only did it for three days. So you don't know. You might have ran into a nigga that you actually liked. So me, like I said, when I get in there, I'm going for the joint that, listen, we might have, listen, you want to go hang out after this? You want to chill? You know, you take my number. You know what I mean? Take my gram. We want to talk like that. But I don't. that's the one I'm going to tip. Hey, ma, call me. Let me, let me spend and some money on you outside of here. there's sexual harassment in there. And it's of crazy. course it is. All right. It's no, a strip club. I know it's the strip club, but like have manners. Like just because you're putting money in my thong, why are you trying to stick your finger in my vagina? I mean, that's OD. You got some niggas It happens savages, very, yeah. very frequently. So yeah, savages. of course it is the strip club. Of course you're there to sell your sensuality and stuff. But it's like, um, my mans, I don't know where your fingers has been at. Like... So I, I so, like I'm giving you a lap dance. I'm not. I'm so not. You, you know, so, getting butt naked for you right now. So you like, straight you know. away f from that. You doing the dominatrix. You kicking niggas in the balls. Uh -huh. and, and like, where did like h how does that come about for you? Cause because like culturally, I feel like that's not something that that we do where we from. Oh. I, and, but then I'm looking on your page, and I look like it look like some niggas. I seen some niggas that it look like I know some of them niggas. Like, yeah, yeah. And these niggas is getting kicked in they nuts. You'll be surprised. Like I said, kink has no color. Like right. most of my clients are black. Right. And they're awesome people, and they like certain things, and I'm willing to provide that for them. And it's a mutual respect for each other. And I, I with my black clients though, I'll never refer to them as slaves. Like it's just a different right, dialogue. Right. Like the guy I post a lot with, I refer to him as my Patsy. Like he's part of my gang. Okay. You know, like it's just a different role play that I have with them. But they're also channeling things, and they're also looking to have certain like fetishes, like fetishes catered to them. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Like, all right, so what? You like getting kicked in the butt in the balls, or or you like to get fucked in your asshole? You're not over here molesting little kids, so I really right. don't care. You know. I'm not trying to fuck a goat, like. Come on, so weird. you had the butt plug on your page. Is the butt plug for you or for the dudes? What I had on my page is not a butt plug. It's a chastity cage. I know what you're referring to—a little silver thing. So yeah, thing. it's not a butt plug. A lot of people think that it's not a butt plug. What is the difference? It's a chastity cage. It's for the dick. It's this cage for the penis. And then what? And then what? It's supposed. To, it's designed to reduce the size of the penis, like with pressure. To reduce the size of the penis? Mm -hmm. I thought y'all like big dicks. Why would you want it to be reduced? Because- Like humiliation? Yeah, it's like okay. a humiliation thing. And it's like, some people, they want to be emasculated. Mm. Some people, they they just- I, I had a guy once that he wanted me to, like, to cut his dick off. He wanted you to cut his dick yeah, off? I never did it, obviously, but <sighs> he he really wanted that. 
And I, it was early on in my career. I was considering it. You was going to do it? You could have killed that nigga. I know. I didn't do it because of that. Because murder is not legal. I don't want to go to prison. That's the only reason you ain't do it? You thought about it? Yeah, I thought about it. I feel like he had a real disgusting secret that maybe he did deserve that. How much he was going to pay you for that? At least 20K. You thought about that. Yeah, That's 20 bands. That's 20 bands. You think about it too. Nah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> and it gets more sick. Do you really want your stomach to turn as to what he wanted me to do after I cut it off? What did he want you to do? He wanted me to cook it and have somebody else eat it. I think somebody did that. I feel like... Oh, uh, I know what you're referring to. It was these two guys. Yeah. And I then one of them went to prison and he actually became a vegan after. Oh, I bet. After that? Yeah. I'm just glad I never pulled through with that. I probably wouldn't be sitting here right yeah, now. Yeah, that's crazy. Them 20 so how, would have so, went to a lawyer. <laughs> let me ask you this. So how, from, <laughs> like, how did you develop an appetite f for that type of stuff? It was, it's, it was naturally in you or it was just about the bread? Like, oh, excuse me. It was definitely not about the money at first because I wasn't right. making shit at first. Excuse me. I got acid reflux. I had Popeye's last night. The, the sandwich? That mm. shit still got y'all in a chokehold. I didn't even want it. I just was hungry and they were open. But, um. So, yeah, you. you. What got me into it is like, I heard you could abuse men for money. And then, like, when I got into it and I started working at the dungeon and started learning, like, all the crazy shit people were into, I became more and more curious. Like, how far are people willing to go? And. I know as I get older, I be wanting to try different things, but I just, I, I just like my gooch lick. That's as far as I'm going. That's normal. That's normal. Yo, the kids on TikTok is like, yo, unk, what are you talking about? Why are you getting, like, what are you doing? That's regular, right? I feel like a lot of guys, like, they ass ate, they ass played with, the they gooch, gooch lick. is a little, is different than that. You ass. say the gooch because it makes you feel better about yourself, but low key, you like your ass lick. It's okay. Gosh, the gooch is the, not the same thing as getting your ass it's, lick, though. It is, though. It's all it's right It's not. There. It's, it's. It's like the Bronx and Harlem. Just because you right there, you don't got to cross that bridge. But you cross the bridge and it's not no real difference. It's a big difference between the Bronx and Harlem. It's just the difference is how you feel about it. It's a big difference. How you feel about it. I like the gooch. You like your face. I like the gooch. He like his ass. Eh? I like the gooch. <laughs> I, listen, I cannot confirm nor deny that. I. Right? I'm a Gucci boy, man. Gucci you gang, all right? But like, so like I said, where, I ain't here to judge. where does the appetite for that come from for, for, for you? Because you said you wasn't getting the bread at first. I've just always had a morbid instinct to me. I don't know. I've always been strange. Like as a kid, I used to love like, I used to like collecting the Ripley's books. Girl, please believe it or not. Uh huh. And yeah, then I would collect these too. like books. They would like have the Maria and the Scholastic Fair, fair and they would come like with a taxidermy bug. Um, my mom one time got me a taxidermy tarantula from DR. Uh, I always would pick up animals like from the street and stuff. I never harmed animals though. I'm an animal lover, but like. But you'll cut a nigga dick off. <sighs> Save the bees. <laughs> cut a nigga dick off though. I mean, it's different, you know. So from from that, I didn't get around to cutting it off though. So 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 we go from like early teenage years. Like, was that something that you was trying on on your boyfriends at a at a younger age? No, I didn't have boyfriends. I never really had a boyfriend to be honest. I mean, I've had sex obviously, right. but I've never been in like a real relationship. Like, never been in love. I, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been in love, but. You I just never had like a real relationship. Hmm, that's interesting. Never? No boyfriend? No prom? My prom date was my gay best friend in high school. You ain't give him no pussy? He was gay. He didn't want no pussy. I be feeling like them gay niggas be like slipping no. it in though sometimes. No. Like not they him. not him. No. But it be I like I don't know about other ones, but no. I be feel like not I be, my gay friends. Or they be like, they just be like, okay, oh, that suck your titty. I'm not, I, I'm not. It doesn't no. do nothing. No. So it's bisexual guys, I guess that's gay. what you describe it. If you if you mess with a guy, you gay. But if you like a man and a woman, you bisexual. 
I feel like that's just. I feel bad though. Like I, I don't. It's no. It, listen, we all, everybody got like a gay cousin, a gay uncle. It's no knock if that's what you're doing, but I just feel like once you go that way, like it's just, it's. You feel like a woman could be bisexual? Yeah. So why can't a man be bisexual? It's just, it's not the same. Why not? It's just like, it's just like if, if we, if me, you, and another girl is a threesome, me, you, and another guy is a train. It's not the same. It's a threesome. Nah, that's a train. It's a threesome. It's three people fucking. It's threesome. That's a train. It's not. It's just not the same. A it's, tree. A, a train to me has to be like four guys or more. Two guys is it's, I, it's a threesome. Okay, but it, if if it's if it's if I, if it's me and four girls, are you gonna call that a train? Mm, mm, I would call that a reverse gangbang. I like those. I'll be watching those. <laughs> yeah, I like those. You, it depends if they all lining up to eat your gooch and play with your ball. Like maybe they are running. It's, a not, train a train. Train. it's not a train. It's not a train. It's Gucci gang. You, you be like a little pinky up there. Nah, like nah, so. nah. You a sucio. Gucci gang. Gucci gang. Let's uh get into this second scent. Oh. All right. This is Nishani Neffs. I really want to know your opinion on this. All these fragrances are warm, spicy scents. That are perfect for these New York for winter nights season. that we got coming up. I don't know why I'm so nauseous. Oh shit! Oh my god, you guys, I'm pregnant. Pregnant? Nigga, yeah. shot it up? I don't know. So that's got honey, saffron, fig, violet. I have to smell it later because right now it smells horrible to me. Hold yeah. on, I I want to hold the listen. Sage, rose, nutmeg, jasmine, oud, vanilla, whiskey, leather, amber, cinnamon, and cedar. Now, as it's com- a banyo. No banyo? No, that's a banyo. This is a banyo too? Yeah, all the shit they got in there sound like a banyo. Oh, that's how it, because they just yeah, be just putting all the stuff they got. Just a little water, holy water, and that's it. So look, as complex as this fragrance is, has all these different notes. I could definitely sense the whiskey. All I smell is rose. And I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like it neither. I feel like throwing up. Mad people, you already said that. Yo, you better not. You th- we going viral for real. You do that? Yeah, don't cut it out. You we not, yeah. yeah. I'm trying yeah. to get millions of views. Yeah, too. we going fucking viral. You Earl right now, just go that way. I keep my phone far away from What's me. that on the back of the phone? This is That's you? my friend Kiki. Follow her. She fire. Oh, she nice. She a freak, bro. She's a freak, like dominatrix freak? Just regular, just yeah, she's a regular freaky girl. Just regular, like Gucci gang. I don't know if she's been Gucci gang. Then how freaky could you be? I don't you... know. I never talked to her about that. She might be. So what y'all talk about that you know she's I a just freak? met her this summer, so we talked about enough. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna put her on blast. Got her on your podcast if you want. All right, we could want to that. Do you mess with girls? Yeah. You do. Yeah. So you are bisexual. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. You think that's part of the reason why you never had a boyfriend? No. Have you had a girlfriend? No. No girlfriend, mm-hmm. no serious relationship. Mm-hmm. You think people don't take you serious, or you just don't take people serious? I think it's both. It's both. Yeah. Would you consider yourself promiscuous? No, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. Yeah, I'm almost an asexual. Almost asexual. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't really be fucking around like that. I could go a year or two without having no type of sex. Like, like I'll masturbate, obviously, but like I don't really care for like. Human to human contact. You know, like Salvador Dali. Uh, enlighten me. So he's a painter. He did all the surreal, the surreal paintings. Um, he like people would think he was like a real ladies man and stuff, but in reality, he didn't fuck around too much. Cause right. from an early age, he saw like what STDs do to people's bodies. So like he's just very, he was very grossed out by people, and I feel like I I kind of deal with the same thing. Like I'm grossed out by people. What makes you? Because just... there's a lot of diseases out there. You know right, what I mean? Like, right. And people aren't as cautious as you would like to think that right, they are. Yeah. People aren't consistently getting tested. Right. People aren't protecting themselves as they should. You know. I was having this conversation with a guy. And anything could happen to anyone. It right. doesn't matter if you're promiscuous or not. It just takes the wrong person. Right. So. I was, I, I was just having this conversation last night where I was telling a guy that like. So I was telling him like, you know, I. Go to the massage parlor, you know what I mean? 
You, a little hand job. It, you, you could get whatever you want when you go in here. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. Get I it. thought it was just a hand job. Uh, listen, it's a lot going on in them places. Well, I mean, man. for a dollar, almost anybody yeah, would do it. This is what I'm saying. So, but he was like, well, how do you know? And I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, sex workers are, are, take care of themselves. Wait, that's their product. You know what I'm saying? So like, yo, I was, cause I was like, you don't know if the girl, he was like, well, she was just sucking a dick. I said, so was the girl who you, you got your dick sucked from But in a, a sex in a worker club. is more likely to make you wear a condom. Right, exactly. Now you meet it, but that's, that's absolutely exactly what I'm telling him. I'm like, but you'll meet a girl in the club and go raw the night you met her. Yes. You know what I mean? It happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that that's that makes sense that you that you'll say that 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 you're not gonna go that route because motherfuckers is dirty out here, man. Yeah, they real dirty. So, I always tell like people that like I've had homegirls hit me up like I wanna have a threesome with my man. How I go about it? Ah, uh, I'm like yo, I'm gonna tell you because they're like I just don't want the bitch to get attached. I'm like the best thing you could do is. Go on Eros, go on one of these websites, right. get yourself a, 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 a little a sex worker, right. find the one you think look cute. Most of the times, they're getting tested on a consistent basis, right. especially if they're doing porn. Right. They have to. They have to. Right. Um, another thing, they don't care to be attached to you. They really right. don't. Half the time, they have their own situationship back home or whatever. Like You're going to pay them for that time. They're going to do what they're going to do for whatever amount of hours you booked them for. And then once they're out that door, they're out that door. Right. Or once you're out that door, depending on how you arrange it. But that is the best way to That's have the a best way, yeah. Because with it, no attachment. No attachment. No worry yeah. about STDs. Yeah. Like, I really advocate for that. Like, yeah. um, there's a lot of, like, propaganda out right now. Like, just, like, completely, like, shitting on sex workers. But we're kind of, like unnecessary force to society. It's a victimless crime. Like, they'll, they'll arrest a girl Think for prostitution. Think about, like, people that's, like, handicapped and shit like that. Like, let's be for real. Like, yeah, we would like to be ideal and be like, yeah, they can find love too. But how real is that for them? Right. How beneficial is it for them to, like... Make a phone call. Yeah, make a phone call. No ex fair exchange, no robbery. And you know this person. You, you know what I mean? Like... Yeah. It's a very real thing, and like I have some friends that you know they do full service, and right. they regular people. They go back home, yeah. they got their kids, they yeah. got their family, they got people they taking care of, and they're wonderful fucking people, and they're intelligent too, and they're building other businesses too. It's not, it's not just that, and yeah. I'm sick and tired of the propaganda, like bringing all these sex workers onto a podcast and be like, what do you rate yourself? I'm waiting for the day somebody asks me that because I'm going to be like, how many people you had sex with and what's the last time you got tested? And what's right. the last time you fucked? Right. Let's ask the real question. Right. What do I rate myself? I would have never given myself a number. I am a wonderful human being. That's what I rate myself. You feel me? Right. But I feel like it's just a lot of like, and I feel like it comes from a place of jealousy, like from insecure men because I feel like secure men, they get it. Like you see how you said it, like, yeah, I'll go to a little massage parlor, get me yeah. a little one, two. You're securing yourself. I respect that. Uh, Over a guy that's like, oh, I'll go on seeking arrangements and troll a bitch and pretend like I'm going to give her money and I don't give yeah, her nothing. Nah, that's goofy. Like, that's goofy. Like, bro, you, that's like, that's like me going up to a whole bunch of pimps and being like, I'm not going to be a hoe. Right. Why am I in this room? Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, you feel I, me? Like, listen, I tell I'm dudes. I'm not here for the pimp and shit, but I'm not going to be in a room full of them either. I tell dudes, that's that's my, I've been going to the strip club since I was 14. My, my, my basketball coach, we won a game, he would take us to the strip club, the Foxy Lady in Baltimore, all right? Because I went to high school in Maryland. Yeah, you definitely from a different era. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, nigga, win a game, I'm 14, and then get, yo, I remember Shorty, yo, I bust in my, I had the sweats on. Oh, my God. Shorty gave me the lap dance, I bust right, I walked. your mother, I would have killed you, I coach. She ain't know what we was doing. Nah, I I'm just like, yo. I was keeping that secret. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I'm going out with my coach. Yeah. But in all honesty, it was fucked up, because I would much rather had a coach that was showing me the right things because outside of that, we got to some dumb shit it, being out in the streets with this dude at 14. And and, and he a weirdo for that. And, well, Think about it now. You a grown ass man. A grown man, ass man. I'm, and you going to take some 14 year old boy to a strip club? It was a different era though. It was Not, a different era. But era, at the same time, I know my peers. That's why a lot of us is fucked it's up. Fucked my cousin up. had yeah. me going to, to the club with her 16 years old. I'm over here talking... And flirting with motherfuckers that's in their thirties and Grown ass that man. wasn't right. Right, that's Just not right. Just because it yeah, was a different right. ever, it doesn't mean it was right for him to have grown ass women who got yeah, no. Nah, it, it was. Like, it, I, when I look at like my peers that had good coaches, and I see like 
how far that took them in life. That's like having a father. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's the difference that's between that's a father figure. Yeah. And in all honesty, when my dad met my coach, because my dad is from Harlem, mm. my coach was from Brooklyn. And you you know that you if you're not from New York, like people think we all close, but the dynamics of, from borough to borough is different. So as soon as my dad met him, like, man, fuck this nigga, yo. This nigga ain't right. And I'm like, nah, it's my coach. Where was the coach from again? He was from Brooklyn. That's what, yeah, I don't trust Brooklyn. Bro. So, right, that's what I'm saying. So my dad- It's true though, they yeah, shiesty. They They're shiesty. a different type of shiesty. That's a different type of shiesty, yeah. right. You know what I mean? So, he, but like- Your dad was on to son. I say that to say this though. I would much rather just go to a, a, a get get a little massage, mm. get what I'm gonna spend less doing that than I'm gonna spend at the strip club, and I'm getting my nut. And it's direct, you know. With the strip club, a stripper could really be very charming, right? And she could really have you thinking that and after then, the night she's so, gonna link you. Soon as soon as you're done with that, she's on to the next. I'm in a room with, with a little Ling Ling. She rubbing my back. Spank one out. My my suck it, Gucci gang, all of that. Fair exchange, no right. And I'm going to spend less doing that. You real. I respect that. Nah, it's real shit. I, I'm t- like, you going home with an empty pocket and a hard dick when you leave the strip club. So no offense to my strippers. I got love for all y'all, but like... I've been doing it. But don't you feel like the guys who consistently go to strip club and consistently do that, you don't feel like that's a fetish for them? I feel like niggas, niggas fetish be throwing money. That's what I'm saying. But like the whole like tease and denial aspect of it. Because I've done sessions like that where they want tease and denial. I mean, listen. And it consists basically of what a stripper does. I'm giving them lap dances. I'm all in their face. But they, they, I don't even touch it. Like they leave with that Woody out the door. I don't, that's, that's and they pay for that. They'll pay five hundred dollars for the hour for that. Do these niggas have a Cardi B fetish? Because I know you be hearing you look like Cardi. That I look like Cardi? Yeah. No, I used to hear a lot that I look like Alicia Keys. I could see that too. I think it's just the profile. You don't look like her. You just. I just feel like how we talk. Yeah, but I mean, all all, all Spanish girls from New York, you know. But you do somebody till you had to hear that. Not Cardi. Not Cardi? This is my first time hearing Cardi. You never heard Cardi? No. I can I've heard Lisa. like the way I talk, I talk like Cardi. Maybe that's but, what, yeah. It's, it's, but it's, not how I look. Sorry, so but these, like, I kind of see it. We got chinky eyes, the big lips. So these guys is coming to the room, right? Yeah. Smothering, you sitting on their face. Do you wear a particular fragrance when you putting all that ass on these dudes? Yeah, like if they don't ask for like smelly, cause like some guys will ask for it to be smelly. Like if they ask for smelly, then I'll just wake up and I shower. Like whatever. They want your ass to to stink. Yeah, and your ass is automatically gonna stink after you took a shit, even if you like wipe and clean well. Like it's gonna stink. And they want that. Yeah, they want it to stink. Shitty ass on their face. It ain't shitty. Like I clean my shit right. unless they ask for something like that, and that's extra. So the flip side of that is, what fragrance would you wear outside of of, of, of lately? Of I've that been wearing this fetish? like coconut scent, but I wear multiple fragrances. I okay. wear a lot of fragrances, and then there's like this um Arabic one that I bought that there was like advertising on TikTok a lot, and it was in a pretty bottle. So was what was like, the name of it? I forgot the name of it. Okay, I I don't remember the name of the fragrances. I just wear whatever I think smells good. There was a Versace crystal one that I liked for a little bit, but then I wore it and somebody told me I smelled like a hookah and then I stopped wearing it. You don't smoke hookah? Nah, I don't smoke hookah. Dominican and you don't smoke hookah? Nah, but here's why. So I had a fake little like drug addict phase. Oh, um, it's pills? Yeah, pills. Okay. And this girl, she she gives me this pill. She's like, oh, this is Vyvanse. It's stronger than the Adderall. And when I used to like pop Adderalls a lot, um... It would make me want to smoke cigarettes. The Addy do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would give me like anxiety. I heard like, the, the Addy make you like focus. Yeah, it make you focus. But it's like meth. It's an amphetamine as well. Like okay. a, like meth. So it like makes you like angsty. Like that's why you focus because you just got to do something, you know? All right. So anyway, she gives me this shit called Vivan. She's like, this is like 20 times stronger than Adderall. Like take it, girl. You're going to be lit. So I take this shit and I was up for like two days straight. And then I went to go smoke some cigarettes and I smoked them. I smoked two cigarettes. And bro, 
that shit gave me the worst nausea in my life. I used to work with kids around this time. I worked at the schools. Right. And like the teacher, she's fucking around with the with the hand sanitizer and that smell is hitting me. And I get up and I throw up almost on top of these kids. It was so embarrassing. Thank God the teacher just swore that I was pregnant. She didn't think like I was doing What's drugs. What's that? This is you pregnant now? Because no, you I'm said you pregnant. was nauseous. I'm you never pregnant. been pregnant? No. Thank you never Jesus. shot it up? No. Never? They've shot it up, but I'm I never got pregnant. I'm about to say, because niggas not pulling out. Like, the raw ski. Let's just say that summer in Alaska was sinful. <laughs> what the hell do that mean? <laughs> I worked in a salmon plant in Alaska a few, like a year ago. You worked in a salmon plant in Alaska? Yeah. I thought that shit was a, something from a movie or something. You really worked in a salmon plant yeah. in Alaska? Yeah. There wasn't much to do, like. I, but just get your get the club shot up. It was it, you was getting your shit shot up in the the salmon factory? So we all kind of lived there, and there wasn't like a Wi Fi or nothing. Like it's literally like going back to nineteen ninety nine. Like you want to? Why see the somebody? fuck did you move to Alaska? Don't they pay you to live out there? Yeah, they they was paying me. I was doing a job over there. I was working the summer. Yeah, but how the fuck you like? My you, friend put me on. Why you didn't go to up. Jersey or like? How the fuck you wind up in Alaska? I'm a little a, adventurous. That's also how I ended up in a communist court when I was nineteen. They invited me to Wisconsin and I went. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let's let's let's. <laughs> I I knew you was gonna be interested. <laughs> My story be crazy. The man. salmon. I can't wait till this movie come out. The salmon factory. Mm -hmm. How how old was you? That was that was a year ago. I was twenty eight. So you go to Alaska. Uh huh. You live in a salmon factory. Mm -hmm. How many people are living there? Uh, a couple hundred. A couple hundred people. I would say yeah, just about. Cause a lot of staff. Right. Yeah. So. This is like, everybody's fucking each other type of shit. No, I wouldn't say that either. But um, that was just my story. Like I met someone over there, and he was from Alaska. Nah, he was from California. I'm about to say, you giving a pussy to niggas from Alaska, ma. Like, come on. I should have never gave him no coochie, but... But what, what made that summer so interesting? I didn't bring my vibrator with me. <laughs> so, how was that interesting? He like, was just... I ain't have no self-control. I was horny as hell. Just like men get horny, women get horny, make dumb decisions, too. Was you shooting the club up? What? He was shooting it up. He shot it up like twice. I wasn't letting him do that. I felt nasty. I didn't like that. You didn't like it? No, I didn't like it. It was too, like, creamy? Yeah, you waddling after me. You was, you was trying to shake it out so you ain't had a baby? Did you drink <laughs> a Malta? They say, like, yo, you Spanish. There is no Malta out there. Yo, they, they, niggas, yo. There's I, nothing. There was well, no stores. Well, hold on. Let me ask you. Yeah, because that's what I said. The Hispanic culture is it, not expansive like that. But you ever heard that, like, if if... If you shoot the yeah, club up. Yeah, if you up, drink a hot malta, it'll kill the baby. It'll kill the baby. <laughs> That's some bullshit. That's not true? I don't think so. I don't know. I done gave some hot maltas out before. Maybe that's why I'm a little fried. Maybe my mom tried to drink a hot malta. I don't know. So, all right, so Alaska, what? but what made it bad? Because you said you said they gave the nigga no pussy. He was a moreno? No, he was Mexican. A Mexican? But they, the Mexicans out there is different. He was just like, you know, like after you see somebody- He was short? A short Mexican? He wasn't that short though. He was. He was. You having a flashback? I, I, you must have liked that nigga. You liked that nigga. I ain't mad at him, man. Shout he out was to the cool, Serenos, but, man. But what? Then, like when I finished the shit and I saw who he him for who he was, he was a cornball. Like. But you was desperate times called for desperate measures. Yeah. You was in Alaska in a salmon factory, fucking Mexican niggas with no vibe. Hey, hey, hey! I was fucking one. But it had it, this is cool. The way you saying it though, fucking Mexican niggas. No, it, it was listen, one. All right, but I'm just saying one. this is that was a mistake. wild summer. And then you know, the crazy part about it is, he worked the kitchen, but then the guy who ran the shit for the fishermen later on was a kind of flirting with me, and I was like, damn, I should have went for this one. Like, he was the one making the big bucks. So why you just, you, that was your boundary? You said I had already let him hit. I'm not going to play around like that. Oh, no, it was too late. Like, it was after the season was over. We was talking, you know, you exchange information with people. All right. But. So you never thought about going back out there, getting a bag, 20,000, top his dick off, saute it with the salmon? <laughs> yeah, you filthy. 
<laughs> you de- you smiling. You it, it just might be up your alley. Sixteen in a communist cult is what you said. Nineteen. Nineteen. I started a communist cult when I was nineteen, and then I destroyed it when I was twenty-one. You destroyed it. What do you mean destroyed it? I destroyed it, like the whole cult. See, y'all, y'all, I keep telling y'all, y'all play with these Bronx women if y'all want. Y'all see how how Cardi went off on Offset. Shorty shut down. The That's whole just the f- beginning. Cardi about to end up with a billionaire. <laughs> how you shut down a whole fucking cult? You did. You, you you looking at that? You see all that ass? You think you want to play with that? Caution. It, it just at your own risk. Like, how did you shut down a whole cult? Oh, I really feel like I got it now. I'm, I'm playing strong. You doing what? Yo, I'm telling you. You gotta start clean eats, man. Clean eats. We not get you start getting older, all of that fried shit and all that shit. You can't do it. If you gonna throw, I ain't gonna. If you gonna throw, this is no kink, this is no fetish, but let's go viral. Throw up on me, baby. Just do it. Projectile vomit. Let it out. Uh. Ooh. You good? Yeah, I'll be alright. Alright. This is the first of me. <laughs> Throwing up on a podcast. That shit. Out the shot, right? All right. Yeah, because either way, if I vomit, I'm going to vomit on you. Going all over your pussy. All right, yeah. Listen, I'm trying to send it. This shit stink anyway. That shit does stink. It already stink. So you, you throw up on it. You throw up on it. <sighs> nah. You got to throw up? You can't throw like that. Oh, my stomach is literally like, and the room is spinning. I feel horrible. Bro. The room is spinning? That might be that that Nefs. I really don't like that. That 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 fragrance. That fragrance might be that bad. Oh. Ooh. You good? Let me get you something. I got water. No, Chick Fil A is way better. Yeah, Chick Fil A would never, and you get points. They gonna give you fries and yeah, five hundred points get you some fries. Go ahead, keep keep going, baby. It's okay. Let it all out. What this tattoo say? Stop following the crowd. They are lost. You good? Is it out the shot? That's not fucking like funny. We're going to slide it in. Excuse me, everybody. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like... That's just how my family is, though. We could be in our deathbed. We still crack a joke. I'm going to say... Like, that was nasty work. Whew. That shit was kind of fire. <laughs> nah, I, I kinda, <laughs> you gotta be making reels. That, that shit thing. was kind of fire, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean, um, but you know, like sometimes you don't, you don't drink. Nah, I got a weak ass stomach. As nah, you my see. my shit is fucked up too. Yeah. But like you know, sometimes when you get that shit out, like it's just. Yeah. You needed that. Yeah, I feel a lot better now. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I know it's food poisoning. Yeah. Because if it wasn't, I would have just kept barfing. Yeah. 
Fuck me, when I, when I feel like that, I And just... it tasted weird. Did you know when the chicken tastes like it's cooking old grease? Yeah. That's how it tasted. This is in the Bronx? Yeah. Popeye's in the Bronx? Come on, you, you setting yourself up on that one. I'm bro. a Bronx baby, though. We immune to this shit. Yeah, not really. Clearly not. <laughs> not really. Yeah. Not really. All that, no. that lead in y'all water, all that shit that's fucked up out there. Nah, -uh, man. We all a little fried. <laughs> all right, man. So, yo, I, I still got to find out about this communist cult. Oh, so, okay. I used to, when I was in high school, I used to do a lot of activism because. My high school used to be in Bronx Community College campus. Right. And then they moved it to, they was trying to move it to Taft at first, but then we started protesting and shit. And then they moved it to South Bronx campus. Right. And then like through all those protests and all that shit, all that activism, I like um, joined my first group, which was um, called Sisters and Brothers United. But the thing with these groups is like, it gets weird because, like, a lot of males that are, like, dorks and, like, regularly don't get pussy tend to join these kind of groups. And, and they could be very predatory. Yeah, yeah. So, like, SBU, like, oh, what you I left doing? it yeah, let's, let's go work on this project. And then, yeah. There was this Christian guy who's being mad weird with the high school girls. And whatever. That got weird. <clears throat> and then um, in college, I like, the first year of college, I was just partying, like, I wasn't CUNY. I was still in the city, but like right. that's when I really started like just going out and partying with my friends. Like I wasn't on Smash no more because I'm like officially 18 and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then one day I was at this party, and it was at one of my friends' house. She like would regularly throw parties, <clears throat> and this crazy ass rumble. Like I will never forget it. It looked like like ghetto Sparta. Hundreds of people on King's Bridge fighting. Right. Like, it was fucking ghetto. What, what, it was like, what was the beef? It was, what was the groups? It was like a variety of beef. Like, it started off uh, from what I heard, this girl was getting jumped by these other girls. And then, like, the girls that knew the girl, like, they all jumped in. And then guys started jumping in. And then guys that had beef with each other started fighting each other. Uh, R.I.P. My son Rico, he was at that party. He got killed at that no, party? No, no, no. Oh, he I was about there. to say. This drunk is... driving accident. Don't drink and drive. Though. Yeah, yeah. That's the worst. I got a DUI. I, shit made, that's another thing that made me change my drinking habits, Tiana, was I got a DUI. Yeah, take yeah. a cab each time. Yeah, Even yeah. if you got to go pick up your car the next day, you're right, like, right. trust me. Although Rest the crazy Rico. part about it, the drunk driver didn't die, but... That's how it always goes. Yeah, That's but it's it still goes. pretty sad. Like, yeah. People lost their lives. So the, the rumble erupts. Yeah, so the rumble goes down. And then I get a Facebook message from a friend of mine that used to be part of the um the group that I was in when I was in high school. But he was in high school, too. We are like, the same age. Right. And he was like, yo, I'm part of this other group. And I really was like... When I was in high school, I learned that our society needs a revolution. I still believe our society needs a revolution... It's just, we don't have anything really that's building to that. Like, Yo, that throw up brought you back to life, yo. Yeah, I needed to hey, throw you, up. You vibrant now. I, li yeah, I, I, I was, like where I your energy's green, at you know? now. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> so the, he sends you the message? So he sends me this message. And, like, I always wanted to be a revolutionary. I always admired people like Lolita Lebron. Like, when I started learning about these, like, Asata Shakur, like, all these historical figures that they fought for the liberation of our people. Um, I just feel like our generation needed to keep that going. But what I wasn't understanding at that time, what I was too young to understand is that the way the government destroyed these groups and these people is not the same nowadays. Nowadays right. we re rebuilding from a different stance. It's right. a different society than it was back then too. So <clears throat> he hits me up. He's like, yo, I'm part of this revolutionary group. Come with me to this um student power convergence, some shit like that. And I used to always go to like conferences. Like I went to the National GSA conference, Gay Straight Alliance conference. Okay. I used to every year go with my school's Gay Straight Alliance to like this trip where they would like educate us about different like historical facts and laws and stuff that were, you know, 
going on for the gay community. So I always was an involved kid. Right. So then to find out about this group that's like claiming to be revolutionary for me, that was a dream. I'm like, right. this is what I've been dreaming for. This is what I'm ready like to sacrifice my life for. Like that's how it really was for me. It's like a gang. Like yeah. you like you're gonna ride. Like right. you don't give a fuck about nothing. You don't give a fuck about police. You don't give a fuck about nobody. Like it's real shit. But um when I went to Wisconsin and shit, like fucking was <laughs> this nigga is crazy. Yeah, yo, you know because yo, you gotta understand when it come to New Yorkers, motherfuckers stay on a block. Yeah, you know what I mean. I like, never been like that. Yeah, you know how be like nigga be like, yo, I'm going to Brook. Like even in Harlem, like East Side niggas stay on the East, West Side nigga. You got some niggas that that I got cursed out one time because I asked the guy to meet me on Fordham. I, where was he from? I don't know where that. Bitch ass was from. The way it was, that's what that means. The, the, he pussy for that. He pussy? Yeah, he pussy. Because how you cursing me out? Because you got beef on Fordham. But that's... but That's that's your problem. That's but, not my problem. But this is what I'm saying. But Lays. This is, this, that was his name. Lays. No, no, Fuck no. Fuck you, Lays. We beeping all that shit out. We don't... Yeah, I don't Lays! Want, nah, nah. Uh, we not... Lays and not the chip. <laughs> nah, we not jacking that. <laughs> yeah, shout out to homie. I don't know who your ops is. You pussy. Nah, we ain't doing that. But what I'm saying is, uh, it's a lot of dudes that's how it is in, in the town. Like, so you wind up in fucking Wisconsin? Like, yeah. How? Cause, cause we, that's where it was at. The the nah 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 the conference. I used to like going on these trips because they was free. That's the part I forgot to mention. So he's like, yo, you we going to Wisconsin? Everything is paid for. We just not too sure if we're gonna sleep on the church floor or if we're gonna get dorm rooms. He was trying to fuck too. Was he one of them? Cause you said that this occurs. No, in these like rooms. um. I about to say. I feel like the the men of that group. Smashing on the church floor. Is I think crazy. they didn't want to. They didn't want to fuck me. They just thought I was stupid and easy to manipulate. <clears throat> At this point in your life, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, young. yeah. And I was gullible when okay. I first joined. All right. Um, I think me being gullible is what helped me destroy them. So you get to Wisconsin for a conference. Yeah, yeah. So then he starts telling me about the organization that he's a part of. He's like, you know, I'm part of Revolutionary Student Coordinating Committee, and you know, we want to build. Uh, a, a new communist party in the United States and you know we wanna um just start a communist revolution and even when I first joined I'm like I don't know about communism because I didn't understand communism at first but then like when I started understanding what communism truly is right. it's not it's not a bad idea it's just hard to bring into play because it's not gonna happen like, we can't transition from this capitalist consumerism society to, like, a communist society where everybody kind of works. Everybody, you know, builds the society So, and together. you realized that at that point? No. At what point no, did you realize no. that? I realized that later in life. Like, oh, it was okay. way after when I so, realized that. So, when you're in that space, what was it that had you saying, yo, these people is full of shit? Um, they were, they, like... How long did it take you to realize that? It took a lot. It took years. Years? Yeah. Even after I left the group, like I like I had to really like separate myself from politics completely to figure out like, whoa. So it don't gotta be like that, you know? So you leave, right? So it's not that I left. This is what happened. So being that they was building a quote unquote communist party, being that they practiced communist politics, they became paranoid. And they believed that the FBI was on to them. So they called me one day. And all right. So before this happens, they the 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 leaders of this group were kind of like sexually assaulting and being like weird with some of the girls. Like there was a lot of allegations going around of some weird shit. Like I witnessed some shit. Like it was just a lot of like abuse, right? In the midst of all of that, like right before all these allegations came out, this one little paranoid fuck. He was like, the FBI visited my house. And now that I think about it, he I don't, believe, yeah, yeah, I don't really know FBI yeah. fucking visited me. Right. Probably was the census that he thought it was the FBI. Right. Um, so when that paranoia started, it was then the, the sexual allegations started. And then one day they, they call me and they're like, yo, meet me at such and such diner. Like, we get to the diner. I have one of my roommates follow me because it's, like, around where I was living. And, like, right. my, my roommates at the time was also part of the group. So they follow me to the diner. I get there, and they tell me, basically, you know, the FBI is on to us, and it's somebody in the group, and 
what we're going to do is we know you're having because we was going to have like a final meeting basically like it, well i didn't know it was going to be a final meeting but basically this was the final meeting where we sat down and we spoke to the girls that were you know assaulted and went through whatever it is that they went through so <clears throat> um they they tell me that day they're like oh we know where the meeting is going to be at we're going to pull up we're going to hold the doors nobody's going to be able to come in or come out and we're going to check everybody's cell phone until we figure out who the infiltrator is. <clears throat> so basically, they was going to hold us hostage. Yeah. So when I get to to the house, I tell them, like, and I'm still, like, so gullible and paranoid, too, that I'm like, oh, you know, they're telling me that um, the FBI infiltrated us and they need to come and hold the doors and whatever. And my homie was like, bro, they're trying to hold us hostage. We cannot let that happen. Right. Especially not with those girls in the room. Like, that's going to yeah. be horrible yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. If they already yeah, went they through that already shit. Yeah, they were already going through yeah. it. So, long story short, um, we switched the location of the meeting to a different location. Like, we were supposed to do it in Manhattan. We switched it to a Brooklyn location. And then when we had that final meeting, you know, we all came ready, like, just in case they would have showed up. Yeah, the like, blicky? No, nah, I brought a hammer. <clears throat> a hammer hammer. Yeah, other people brought like pepper spray and stuff. Nobody had the blicky? Nah, we was poor college kids. Nobody had a fucking blicky. <laughs> like, you know, we wasn't really like that. So then so then what 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 comes out of this? Like how do you So um that day everyone was just like they were done with it, you know? Everybody started walking out and shit. But had I not spoken up, everybody would have been held right. hostage. You know? Right, right, right. And like, it's fucked up because I wasn't the only person that they told about their plan. Right. I was just the only one that spoke that up. That spoke up, yeah. Well, that's, that right there was is is very noble. Um, I thought it was, that I thought it was going to be a little more like diabolical. That what you did just made sense, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's just like like what the fuck. But it ended up destroying it, like right. indirectly. I mean, it it sounded like it needed to happen, though. It did need to yeah, happen. It sounded like it needed to I happen. I think it needed to happen for all of us to find our path and right. to become the people that we are. Right. Today, yeah. Because you know? there's no if they would have dragged that shit out, there's no telling where that would have went. Yeah. We gonna get into this last scent. This is another warm, spicy. This is the only designer scent. This is Tom Ford Noir Extreme, the parfum concentration. This is the highest concentration. This is the concentration that you're gonna smell like after I leave. It's gonna be on a pillow, and you're gonna be like, damn, that nigga beard smell good. That's got cardamom, ginger, mandarin, mandarin orange, Bulgarian rose, mm, orange blossom. That is immediately no. That's immediately no? No, I don't like it. Whew. Well. Sorry, Tom. Sorry, Tom. We not even going to get into the rest of the notes because she don't like that. I like it. It's got leather, suede, amber, tonka bean, cedar. I can see how you could it's like it. It's got that. more of like a texture to it than, and not just a smell. But hey, oh. to each thing. I like own. that first one. You like the first yeah. one. We're going to revisit all of them. You do two things I saw. Mm -hmm. You do wrestling. You be in the room wrestling these dudes. Yeah, I do see do they that. fight back? Nah, they're not allowed to. It's only fantasy wrestling. Oh, so they just in there yeah. getting getting their shit tossed and yeah, turned. They get tossed around a little and bit. kicked and in the nuts. They're small. Right. Like I'm very like. Imagine you trying to wrestle yeah, a wild cat. If I was to wrestle y'all, just be putting you like in headlocks and scissor holds. But like smaller fellas, that's like one seventy and under. I'll throw them around. You could throw around a nigga one seventy. I'm telling y'all, keep playing with these Bronx chicks. You also <laughs> do a kidnap fetish. Oh, I love those. So this is you kidnapping somebody? Mm -hmm. You put seen- Put them in the trunk? Put them in the trunk? Yeah. Did you see this shit? This dude just did that shit from the, he, he, in Vegas, the, he called a girl, said they was gonna do the kidnap shit, and he wound up killing her. I mean, I'm not saying that to warn you or no shit like that. Nah, I'm just I'm saying, not it's gonna just... lie to you. I don't like Vegas. I've sessioned in Vegas, but right. I don't like it because Vegas is a, like the West Coast is just a different animal. Yo, like, I said, listen, people I'm, over there are different. I've been to Vegas one time, and you just know just from being in New York how sinister shit could get. 
I feel like Vegas is like New York on steroids. Yeah. Like the New it, York on meth. Yeah, on meth. Word. Like like that shit is did that just You don't want to play with Vegas people. Yeah. You don't. Yeah, you just could tell like yeah. the the just the fact They don't got that winter to humble them. Right. Right. And, and just the the money that's floating around that town, it's like what type of shit is y'all motherfuckers willing they to really do? They really live that pimp hole lifestyle over there like that's, that's that's that goes on a lot of places, you know. But like I'm talking about like in New York, I feel like it's different. Like right. If a nigga's pimping but, here, he might not even chances are he's not even from here. You know what I mean? But it yeah. it's some New York niggas that's stone cold they pimping. Try it. They, they they listen, I know some listen. But I, I don't want to incriminate nobody. But shout out to all the peas, man. Keep it pimping, man. Can we get a final verdict? On what? On the perfume? On 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 these fragrances. I don't even remember which one. Which one? This one is the first one. It's the first one. That's the Mancera Tonka Cola. I don't know. I don't like how it smells now. You don't like the dry down. That's actually the time for it. No, don't like that either. That smell like somebody. Smell like somebody that you don't like. I don't like that one a lot. So he like he that. probably used to wear that. Before. He probably used to wear that. That is Ness. That is probably the one that made you Earl. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Man. I don't think the fragrance made me Earl, though. I think that was definitely Popeyes. That was the Popeyes. I say that one is kind of the winner for me. But this is know. the winner? So where, where are we ranking this? Digits, date, Alaskan Salmon Factory back shots. Uh, is, it, is, is it good enough for that? Or is it just the digits and the date? It's good for a day and we can see what happens. Date and you see where it goes from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You have an event space of your own, correct? Yes. What that's a podcast space? What do y'all yes, do there? It's a podcast space. You could you book it for photo shoots. It's um getting remodeled this January. Okay. And I'm gonna turn it into a kinky creator studio. So Stay tuned for that. Your girl is going to get on her Bob the Build this shit. And don't ask me to travel for January, please, because I need to focus. <laughs> so you went from nasty Android pics. Yes. Margo, like, Violet. the fuck is this? And now I'm in Amanda Nicole's music video for like two seconds. You want to who? Amanda Nicole's music video. Who the fuck is that? You don't know who Amanda Nicole is? Nah, who's that? I'm old, yo. She's fucking iconic. Fuck you mean? Well, listen, we talking about your space. You went from having nasty photos to having your own space to do photos. I think Margo would be proud of you. Do you ever she reach would. back out to I her? feel like she would. And I don't know. I never saw Margo again, but wherever she is, I hope she's doing well. That's Amanda Nicole. Oh, she's fire. Yeah, she's fire. Oh, she's nice. Yeah. 8.7 million? How you get her video? I DM her. You dead ass? Yeah. A cold DM and she yeah. hit you back? Yeah. And then the bitches there tried to play me. This one girl, she was like, oh, can I tell you some tea? This girl, right? As soon as I walk in. She was nice, though. Like, I don't got no bad words about Amanda. For Amanda, Amanda Nicole, right. No. It was just one girl there that she just, the minute I walked in, mean girl vibes. So this girl that came from Florida, like I came from New York, cause some other girl came from Florida. Where, where did y'all? Where did the video? Was? It was it in at? Cali. It was in, in Cali. LA. And it's like I went for the networking opportunity. Right. For me, I'm like, yo, she's a popping ass model. I'm trying to be like her. Like, right. I'm not ashamed to say it. I look at people who doing better than me, and I aspire for that. I aspire right. for greatness. Like, and I'm grateful that she was even like, oh, pull through, like whatever. Right. So I pull up. Um, this girl from Florida is chatting with this other girl. And she kind of walks away to go do her scene, right? The other girl, without knowing my name, without knowing nothing, and I hope you learn from this when you hear this podcast, she goes to me. She's like, oh, that girl is a fan. That's why I let her go first. I'm so, confused. But so what? What if you were? Like, yeah, what I'm like, I was just confused. I'm like, yeah. why are you telling me this? Like, She seemed like a happy girl. Like, right. I'm just trying to get through the day. I had just got my period that day. That day was just like not the day for me. Right. So then I'm like, oh, yeah, she a fan. She's like, yeah, she flew all the way over here for Florida, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, I came from New York. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, what, like, what are you really trying to yeah. say? Because I like, I'm starting to pop off now, but I've been yeah. around long enough. Like, yeah. You paid your dues. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like. I'm not ashamed to take any networking opportunity and to anybody out there that's like trying to build their platforms, 
don't be ashamed of anything and don't get discouraged even in discouraging situations because you never know the next situation might be the it opportunity, right, you know? Like, right. I've spent a lot of money to get to where I'm at. Right. So, she's like, you came all the way over here for this? Like, the way she Where was she it, from? She was from L.A.? She was from L.A. Yeah. She was, uh, they, they funky out there, too. They, that's yeah. what I'm saying. They like, funky the West Coast too. is a different yeah, animal. It's, different. it's not my vibe. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, like I, I feel like people from the East Coast, like, we more chill than that. You know, and we more this, direct. This like, is the thing. This is the difference. The best way I could sum it up, right? A motherfucker from New York, like if I see a lady going up the steps with a stroller, I'ma grab the stroller and I'ma walk. I'm not gonna say a word to her. Yeah. I'ma just do it. I've so done it too. I could be y'all could say we cold. We all cold, cause it is literally cold here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you said, y'all missing out on that winter. But out there, it's phony. Yeah, it's like phony. Weird. Whereas out here, like I said, we cold. I might it's the motherfuckers I've been walking past for the last ten years. So never said a word to. The girl, she goes to me. She's like, "Oh, you flew all the way out here for this." I kind of stay quiet. I'm like, "Yeah, I did. It's a networking opportunity. Right. Like whatever. I get enough money, I could do it." So then, um, it kind of like struck me. I'm like, "This bitch is really trying to play me in my face." So I go to her. I'm like, "Excuse me, can I ask you?" <laughs> that Bronx came out of you like, "Nah, hold up, yo, what happened?" I'm like, "Why you say that?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's like smirking and shit, cause that's how they are. Like she was like on her phone and she's like smirking whatever. Right. whatever. And she's like, say what? I'm like, why do you say why I came all the way over here for this? Like, what are you really trying to say? Right. And she was like, oh, no, no, I, I didn't mean it any kind of way. I'm hey, just frugal. She saw you was on that type of time. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. She switched but she that still up. didn't, like, get to know. My whole thing is get to know who you talking to. Because yeah. you don't know who is who. Yeah, like, right. I own my own business. I pay my bills. I may not be a millionaire right now. I may not be rich, but I'm well on my path there. Right. And I don't do it by knocking the next bitch right. down. Like right. I'ma uplift whoever because right. I know the struggle. I've been bullied. I've been through all of that. Right. So then later on in the day, she comes up to me. Oh, then the next thing she does, she goes up to the girl from Florida and she's like, Oh, that girl is a fan too, but she don't tell me this shit. So the girl from Florida comes up to me, mad jolly. She's like, Oh my God, you're a fan too. Right. I was like, nah, I'm here for networking. Right, right, right. Like, and I'm like, I don't know why she going up to you. Like now, I'm, now I'm getting tight. And I, I don't know if she heard me, but I said it in the phone right. for her to hear me. So did you? Did you? What was the? What was the end? Like you was like, yo, I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah, like, nah, it don't get to that because I'm much smarter than that these right. days. I came too far to fuck up. To fuck up your opportunity, right, 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 right. So, um, what is that's a skirt? It's it's a little pants skirt. Ass is huge, man. That's natural. No, it's it's a hybrid. What is that? It's like half natural, half fake. Ashes. It was already big, but I got a BBO because, like, I just wanted the hip dips filled in. It's just like a couple details. Okay. I got it detailed. You got it, but it's enhanced. My fucking nice, man. Can you get up again? Show that. Just for the, cause my they they not going they gonna want to see that. I can't do it too much. They they're gonna be mad if if I didn't ask. Yeah. Well, listen. <laughs> I'm proud of so you. Long story short. I'm yeah, yeah, we got because we gotta. Yeah, my bad. Long story <laughs> short. Um, she tells Shorty from Florida that I'm like, I don't know why the fuck she popping that shit, whatever. Then um, we all sitting down. She comes up to me again. We start chatting. We start talking about you know the regular talk. What do you do? The conversations we should have had at first. Right. right. And then I tell her I'm a dominatrix and I also own my own content studio. She's like, oh my God, you're a dominatrix. She's right. like, my OnlyFans fans, they're always like asking me to be mean to them and I don't know how to be mean. Bro, that was my opportunity to play her the same way she was playing me. Right. I was like, what you mean you don't know how to be mean? You a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> The girl from Florida, her eyes just ballooned open and right. she just looked at her phone. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just saying, like, you got you got a bitchy aura to you. Right. Like, so I don't know, like, put that to work with the, with your family. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like, how you just spoke to me two right. hours ago, talk to them like that. Right. And then we got cool. She she cool. She all right. So y'all cool now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't got no beef with her, but like you watching this out there, like just just be a little careful how you talk to people you don't know. Listen, you gotta treat 
the janitor and the CEO exactly the same the exact same way. way. Because you know I know mean? some janitors that are millionaires off being janitors. Let right. me tell you something about this DOE janitor. Some of them are richer than the principal. Right. And Don't it, sleep and, on them. And, and, and these are, are the, some good sugar poppies to have. These are the people that's going to take care of you. Listen, I appreciate your time. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you rejuvenated after you gave up the body. Um, I'm glad I barfed on your podcast. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did too. That's gonna make for some good content. Yeah, I can't wait to see that footage. All right, I'm, and if I'm, you don't make a reel out of that, oh, I'm fuck you up. I'm certainly making a reel out of that, and I'm just thankful that you a good sport about it because yeah. you know some motherfuckers be like, yeah, Yo, you gotta cut that out. No, you know what? You know what? Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I not, need you to cut that nah, off. Nah, nah, nah. It's we so keepin', embarrassing. We keeping all of that, People cannot see me barfing. We keeping all of that. Yo, <laughs> Melody, I appreciate you. Remember, y'all, I don't do this for views. This is the news you can use. Keep your distance. Mind your business. Step your collection up.